Do you want a recipe for how to make a good story? Well, I've got my cooking bowl here today and I'm ready to share with you a recipe. Deborah Weller's Storyteller. I love to help people learn to tell better stories. So what's the first thing that you need as an ingredient in your story? Well, here it is. You have to set up your story. Yeah, you gotta set up your story. And if you set up your story, you're going to remember where did this story happen? What did it look like? Think of the sensory details. So that ingredient is going in the bowl. The next ingredient I would wanna put in are who are the characters and what are their attitudes? Because you know, you might be telling that story and your audience doesn't want to just hear about the gentleman who sat on a bench. No, they want to hear, what did he look like? Was he old? Was he young? Was he wearing a hat? Was he wearing a jacket? What was his attitude? Was he sitting there with just a grumpy look on his face? Put it in the story pot. Number three, ask what? is the message that this audience might need. Yes, put it in the pot because you have to think about that. What is the message that my audience might need to hear? Is there a certain poignant message in the story that I want to emphasize because it goes along with my presentation and the message I want them to take away? What is the purpose? Stirring it up. Mm -hmm. It's starting to make a good story. Let's see what happens next. Oh, this ingredient says, hmm, will there be a problem in the story? Does the character have to overcome a big issue in order to make a transformation or to get a realization? Think about that. And did you create a mood for your story? Did you start out with, hey, I was walking down the road today, or I was walking down the road today, and before I knew it, a dark mist had carried me into a place beyond the trees that I never expected to explore. What will be the mood? It's all about the magic of your voice. Oh, I'm stirring it up and stirring it up and stirring it up. Here we go. The next important thing is narrating with expressive words because you want to make this a way to engage your audience. If you do the blah, blah story format, uh, yeah, I was walking along and before you know it, I was enveloped by a mist of darkness. Who is going to want to listen to that, right? No, you want to be able to share the emotion. Were you scared when you're walking down that path? I was walking down the path and I was enveloped by a mist. Perhaps you're bolder. I was walking down that path. I was enveloped by a mist, but it didn't bother me. How are you going to create that emotion? In two, it goes and round and round. We stir it up until we're almost there with just enough to make a story. But a story needs to have, hmm, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yes. Nice beginning. Maybe start with a question. Maybe set up, a, set it up, set it up like where did it happen? Like I said in the beginning and how that problem was solved happens in the middle. And then at the end, here it goes. We want to bring a satisfying conclusion. This is the conclusion that ties the story together. You don't have to say what the lesson was because each listener will get their own idea about the lesson of the story. 
So you don't want to spoil it by giving an opinion, but just let the story rest for just a moment. Because what you'll find is your audience has actually been transported into that story. They are still pondering what they heard. Their brain is still sorting out and processing. They need a little moment to process that story. So remember, if you want to have a good recipe for storytelling success, get your story done in a sequence of steps that becomes satisfying to the listener, then they will remember your message.